you hear me talk uh, with some frequency about my friends, my morning show partners from Sound Relief Tinnitus and Hearing Centers. And one of the things I mention sometimes is the potential impact of hearing loss on cognitive function. And there was a new piece uh, recently, some more research in this area over at The Lancet, where they're talking about the risks, uh, risk factors for dementia. And one of them is hearing loss. And joining me to talk about it is Dr. Julie, who is the founder and owner of Sound Relief Hearing Centers. It's good to see you in person, Julie. Thanks for joining me in studio. Um, so this this isn't entirely new research, but it's sort of confirming things we thought we knew already. Right, exactly. So no, yeah, there's a lot of research coming together these days showing a connection between untreated hearing loss and dementia. So um, is, is this, my theory has been that if you can't hear very well, it's just causing less activity in your brain, like less, less intellectual stimulation. And it, do you think that's what it's about? Well, we really think it's about social isolation. So oh, when you're not okay. hearing well, you tend to isolate and mm -hmm. then you're not with people and being together with people to connect verbally and, and share conversation. You're not going to do that as often if you're not hearing clearly. That makes makes a lot of sense. So uh, in, in that case, you, you couldn't easily say just how much hearing loss you need to have in order to be adding to your risk factors for dementia. Correct. You could have patients with mild hearing loss. Um, avoiding going to social events because they can't participate as actively or as confidently as they once did. So they start saying, you know what, honey, you go to that dinner with without me. I don't want to go. It's too hard. It's going to be in a restaurant that's loud and right. noisy. So they start avoiding those social activities. And, and then also you're pulling cognitive reserve uh, when you can't hear well. You're having to use more resources to fill in the gaps. And pulling from that cognitive reserve is causing stress on the brain. And so that stress over time is also most likely leading to some of these um, cognitive issues, cognitive decline. From a from a treatment perspective, if if somebody comes to you and says, when I'm at home watching TV, you know, it's okay and I don't even necessarily need to turn it up very loud. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I get into a business meeting or a restaurant, yes. I have real trouble. So yes. are are the are the modes of treatment different for somebody who has trouble that's not necessarily volume related? Yes. But, so what, can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. You know, with modern technology today, we have noise reduction algorithms in prescriptive hearing devices that really help to figure out, okay, with directional microphone technology, if mm -hmm. I'm looking at someone in front of me, I want to hear that person and I don't want to hear the people behind me. So with those prescriptive hearing devices, we can really zone in those microphones to help people focus. And really hearing is a lot about focus, being able to listen and concentrate on one speaker in the presence of many. So yeah, the technology today really helps us, things like deep neural networks in these chips to predict where do you want to hear the most? And, and wow. the technology is amazing. And folks, I'll just, I, I mentioned this before we went to the last break, but part of the reason this is becoming a bigger problem and other things that you normally associate with aging, like Parkinson's, for example, is because of the good news that people are living longer, uh, right? So when everybody died at 50, you know, in 1600, mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't a lot of dementia. Now people are living to 70, 80, 90, 100, and, and you've got this, this issue. So when, how does this present at the clinic, at Sound Relief Hearing Centers? What, is, what are these conversations like when people come in and, and can you kind of detect the, the dementia aspects of this sometimes? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, because I don't think people necessarily are putting, you know, the two together. So right. they're not realizing that, you know, why am I so tired at the end of the day? And, I, and why is my memory not as good as it used to be? Mm -hmm. And we're finding it's just, again, because you're trying to use so much of those additional resources to fill in the gaps, at the end of the day, it's exhausting. And that additional stress is causing people probably to forget, did she say we're meeting for dinner at five o'clock or did she say seven o'clock mm -hmm. or was it six? You know, So being able to hear clearly will give people back both that confidence that they heard correctly, the energy at the end of the day because they haven't been straining all the time. And then in turn, possibly even feel like they have better memory because they're they're not straining all day long every day. Let me let me follow up on this. This is probably be the last thing we have time for, but I want you to elaborate on this a little bit. Uh, whether we're talking to the potential patient right now, or perhaps 
to the son or daughter, of, mm -hmm. right? So maybe we're talking to someone my age who has an 80-year-old parent. What are the things that folks should be looking for? Uh, not just, you know, how do I tell if the hearing's not very good, but to tell if we're, you know, sort of getting these other negative in, um, cognitive consequences. I would say definitely a change in personality. So if someone who used to be extroverted is now be, you know, pulling away from people, being more introverted, um, not socially engaging like they used to, not wanting to go to those dinner parties or go out to eat at a, a noisy restaurant, you know, say, maybe we should have your hearing checked because those sound like symptoms and signs that you could have had a change in hearing that maybe you're not aware of. And, and if we help you with that, you'll get back to that, you know, extroverted personality, that full quality of life that you used to show. So family usually does notice this first. Honestly, they mm -hmm. notice those changes of behavior and say, you're not the same person you used to be. What's going on with you? Um, not many people think to look at hearing, but hearing loss definitely can contribute to a change in personality. And, and, right. And the, and the point you made earlier, which I had never thought of before, which is quite interesting, that hearing loss can cause um, what appears to be worse memory because your brain is so tired. I, I imagine that in those cases, if your memory hasn't actually gotten worse, you can relieve the daily tiredness of your brain by treatments at Sound Relief Hearing Centers, and you may find that your memory is actually okay once you're not abusing your brain like that. Is that possible? 100%. We see it every day. So, yep, there's there's good reason to come see us for that. Folks, if you or maybe an elderly parent, somebody you care about, um, is going down this road, these descriptions that you just heard from Dr. Julie, please do get in touch with Sound Relief Tinnitus and Hearing Centers and let them help you out. Multiple locations around the front range. And Dr. Julie really is the best. That's why people come from around the country to get her help. But if you're in Colorado, you don't have to travel far. Uh, soundrelief.com to learn more. Dr. Julie, so good to see you in person. Thanks Thank for being you, here. Appreciate we'll be right back on KOA.